morning. This is Dr. Carl Chalky. I am the Chief Executive Officer and Chief Medical Officer of the Retina Foundation of the Southwest in Dallas, Texas. Today, we will continue our series of videos on how we do research at the Retina Foundation of the Southwest. Today, we will hear from Dr. Krista Kelly, who is investigating the importance of lazy eyes and its effect on reading, speed, and fine motor skills in these children. I hope you enjoy the video. Hi, my name is Krista Kelly, Director of the Vision and Neural Development Lab at the Retina Foundation of the Southwest. My research focuses on amblyopia, which is commonly called lazy eye, and how it can impact children in their everyday lives for tasks such as reading and fine motor skills. As you can imagine, these skills are very important for a child to be able to succeed both academically and socially. So today, I'll walk you through some of the research that we're doing in the Vision and Neural Development Lab and how we're impacting children with lazy eye in their everyday lives. Amblyopia, or lazy eye, is the most common cause of poor vision in one eye and affects about one to two children per classroom. At the Retina Foundation, we have found that children with lazy eye read about 25% slower than their peers. We have also found that they take 25% longer to transfer test answers onto a Scantron multiple choice form. In school, tests are often timed. And if a child is both slow at reading and slow at transferring their answers, they may not have enough time to finish their test. So for example, if a child takes a 40 question test, they may miss eight to 10 questions. Parents and educators may not be aware that their child is reading slowly because of their lazy eye, especially since one eye has normal vision. My goal at the Retina Foundation is to find out why children with lazy eye are reading slowly. Answering this question can lead the way for the development of interventions and programs to help children with lazy eye succeed in school. Motor skills develop alongside vision and can be affected by vision loss early in life. Fine motor skills are important for learning, especially in younger grades where children manipulate objects for counting and vocabulary. Adequate motor skills are also required for playing sports or music and navigating through the environment every day. At the Retina Foundation, we are finding that children with lazy eye also have impaired fine motor skills. This includes being either slower or less accurate at putting coins into a piggy bank, lacing a thread through beads, or staying inside the lines of a drawing trail. We are also seeing some issues with ball skills and balance. All of these motor impairments may negatively affect self-esteem and learning in children with lazy eye. So another main goal of mine at the Retina Foundation is to find out why these fine motor impairments exist so that we can help prevent or treat motor issues in children with lazy eye. As I mentioned, I'm interested in finding out why children with lazy eye are slow at reading and have fine motor impairments. Both of these abilities rely heavily on the eyes. It is well known that children with lazy eye have unstable gaze and inaccurate eye movements. So because of this, I'm investigating how the eyes are moving during reading and fine motor tasks. I'm using the iLink 1000 binocular eye tracker, which can record the eyes in real time and give me very precise information, such as how fast the eyes are moving and how accurate they are when landing on a target of interest, for example, a word. In my lab, children silently read grade appropriate paragraphs on a computer screen as I track their eyes using the iLink. During reading, the eyes move forward or backward through the text. As a child becomes a more proficient reader, less eye movements are made and reading can be faster. Here is an example of a child with good vision and a grade level reading speed. You can see she reads quite fast, skipping over some words. Now here's an example of a child with lazy eye who stops more frequently while going through the text and reads much slower. Pictured here is a comparison of these two children and the number of eye movements that they make during reading, shown as blue circles. The child with lazy eye on the left, who was a slow reader, made many more eye movements than the child on the right, who was a fast reader. 
My research is finding that slow reading may be due to smaller, more frequent eye movements. The next step is to examine this in more detail so that we can understand why children with lazy eye are making more eye movements during reading. With this information, we may be able to develop interventions to prevent slow reading in children with lazy eye. Coordination of the eyes and hands are imperative when manipulating objects. Fine motor impairments suggest that the development of eye-hand coordination may be affected by lazy eye early in life. I am collaborating with researchers at the University of Waterloo in Canada to investigate how the eyes are moving, how the hands are moving, and how they coordinate with each other during motor tasks. Just like reading, I'm using the iLink 1000 to see how fast a child's eyes can find a dot on the screen or an object in front of them. I am also using the Leap Motion device to track the fingers and hands during reaching and grasping movements. The Leap device can model the hands and provide me with precise timing information so that I can see how fast a child moves their arm when reaching toward an object. Since I am recording both eyes and hands simultaneously, I can also determine whether there is a delay between when the eyes move and when the hands move. My research so far is showing that children with lazy eye are making slower reaching movements and that this occurs during the final approach to the object. This may mean that they are relying less on vision or that the quality of their vision is not as efficient as what we see in children with no vision problems during fine motor tasks. Knowing the cause of fine motor impairments will help guide the development of future interventions that may prevent or treat motor skills in children with lazy eye. Well, that's it for now. Thank you so much for listening about all of the research that we're doing in the Vision and Neural Development Lab. We really are making an impact in the lives of children with lazy eye, and we wouldn't be able to do it without the support of you all. So I hope that you're staying safe and healthy, and hopefully we'll be able to see you at the Retina Foundation again very soon. Mm -hmm.